Hey, kia ora, Helen Brums here coming to you live from Verde Valley in Arizona, just out of Cottonwood, Arizona. Hope you all had a super fantastic sparkling day. I have had, oh my gosh, the most productive day ever with writing and planning and it has just been go, 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 go all day. Um, started the day off with an accountability call with my accountability partner, so that's always good to talk things out about goals and um, where I am with my goals and um, how they're coming along and that sort of stuff and talking about what's coming up in the next week. Um, then I went for, um, I did some reading, started reading a really good um, book called Creating Character Arcs. Um, so I started reading that because I want to make sure I get my characters good. Um, got my notebook going with characters in there. I've been writing, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so I started reading that and then um, went for a walk around, posted some pictures earlier today of um, down by the pool and the sports court area, um, where the sports area is. Um, it was really it was really pretty down there. It was really nice. I went into the pool lounge, that the, uh, the pool um, lodge that they had there, and there were kids there playing video games, and um, um, but not really anywhere I could sit and write. Um, so I thought, you know, I'll just sit in here and write for a little bit, and then I... But, you know, I thought, nah. so I went outside and sat underneath this shaded area that was attached to the pool lodge. And then there was like a little courtyard area and then there was a swimming pool. And so I sat there and I was reading and trying to do some writing. But there were these three people in the pool and they were all at different spots in the pool. Um, and they were having a conversation about anything and everything. Um, I heard about one person who um, is a solo traveler with a tow trailer. And um, so he got all of her story... Um, her medical history, her current medical conditions, got the couple she was talking with, got all their story and their medical conditions, and they covered every topic that you could possibly imagine. <laughs> it was quite an education sitting there, and I'm trying to read, I'm trying to write, I managed to get some writing done. Reading, I just could not concentrate with this conversation going on. It felt like they were sitting right there at the table with me, having a conversation. Um, but these people had just met, and the stuff that they were talking about, it was sort of like, really? That's really getting, you know, personal and, yeah, just a little too much. Um, so, um, like I said, I started reading the book, um, Creating Character Arcs, and you're probably going, what is a character arc? That is a very good question, because I had no clue when I started. But um, the character drives the plot, and the plot molds the character. And they can't work independently, so that's kind of your character arc. And there's three basic Three basic but there are uh, variations within and I'm learning about them so this is what I've learned so far that there's three basic arcs there's the positive change arc which is where um, the um, protagonist has a challenge or believes a certain lie about something and um, during the course of the story um, they start changing it could be they change their beliefs they're conquering um, a fear that they had um, they're conquering their inner demons and by the, so by the time the end of the book comes around or the end of the story comes around they have made positive changes within their lives or within their character the characters created positive changes the flat arc is where the character basically doesn't change throughout the thing but they are the catalyst um, for the change in the story world um, that moves around them um, and then you have the negative change arc, which is the opposite of the positive one. So I'm learning about these, and it's just absolutely fascinating. And it's helped me um, get into writing about more about my characters. I have my characters for um, three book series. They're all interchangeable within the series. I have um, one set of main characters, which are going to be in two of the series. Some of them will cross over into a third series. Um... And then I have the characters from the third series. And so I've gone through, and um, for most of them, I already have written what their challenges are going. I already started writing some of their challenges that they were going to be and some of the questions about what happens and who's trying to get them and um, things from their past coming back to haunt them or challenges they are facing, lies that they've been told um, and that sort of stuff. And I have just been writing and writing and writing. I've been writing so much today. I actually have writer's cramp and my brain is fried. Um, so for a break, I thought... Oh, let's go figure out what's in Tucson that I want to go see and do. So, so I did that, and I arrive in Tucson on the twenty fourth of October. Um, I'm actually going to be staying at a town between Phoenix and Tucson um, for five nights in between, and I haven't even started looking about what's around that area. Um, 
but I have always had a fascination with the Wild West. Um, always. And so this is kind of like um, really cool because I go to Tucson and I'm actually going to get a car, I'm actually going to rent a car while I'm in Tucson because there's a few places I want to go to that um, I can't get to on public transportation and will cost an arm and a leg to go on Uber or even Lyft. So I'm going to get um, a. Um, a rental car. I'm going to go down to Tombstone, which is where the OK Corral is, which is where the famous gunfight at the OK Corral took place on the 26th of September, 1881. I had actually looked it up. Um, it was a 30 second gunfight, 30 seconds, and it's all over. Yet, you know, 138 years later, we're still celebrating it or commemorating it or observing it. And I'm sort of like, Okay, I gotta go find out more about the gunfight at the OK Corral. I know Doc Halliday was involved in it and Wyatt Earp. Um, and it was a 30 second gunfight. So I wanna go learn more about it. They have a reenactment of it and everything else down there. So um, I'm kinda of looking forward to that. And it's in Tombstone, so they have all the. Um, yeah, so I just wanna go and. Because places like this inspire me. They get me creative. Um, it was like when I visited Ketchikan and went and visited Creek Street. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do a story that revolves around Creek Street and Ketchikan. So that's one of the things I was working on today. Um, and so Tombstone, I'm so looking forward to going there. Wild West, yes! Um, history, you know, what is so? what was so... Um, important about a 30 second gunfight that we're still we're still observing it 138 years later um so i'm not going to actually get there on the 26th because it's a saturday and i'm actually got um a couple of, i've got a an event occurring in colorado springs um on the 26th and 27th that i'm going to be um online on the live stream for that um if you are into business and networking and that sort of stuff and you want to make you want to be able to network even better than you do now or you want to learn how to network correctly um well or not correctly but improve your networking skills um come up with a strategy for when you go to a networking event um, why you do not take business cards to a networking event now that one will throw you um and things like that let me know um Go to um, have to network com h a v e the number two network com, and I think it's like forty seven bucks, and you get either live stream access via the internet, or you can actually go in person if you're in Colorado Springs or near there. It's been held at the Embassy Suites there, but if you go to have to network com, it's got all the information there. I will put the link um, into the comments section down below. But it is a phenomenal. Um, Event. I have been to this event several times over the last five or six years, and this event takes place several times a year. Um, I learn something new every single time that I attend this thing, whether I attend via live stream or I'm there in person. I learn something new every single time, and um, and I thought I had pretty good networking skills until I started going to the, these events, and I keep improving. I pick up a new tidbit, new nugget every single time. Um, so if you love to network, you want to make it profitable, be profitable when you're networking. That's another thing they look at, you know, um, then go to have to network.com or send me a private message and I'll send you the link. Um, but it is well worth your time. So back to Tucson, complete divert. So, um, the, the gunfight, okay, crowd, I'm going to go check that out on either Friday or Monday. Um, I'm also going to go check out old Tucson Studios. This is a um, a town that looks like the Wild West, and think of it as something like Universal Studios, but for the Wild West. They have had over 400 movies, TV shows, commercials filmed there since 1939, um, and it's all set up as a Wild West attraction. They have stunt shows, they have rides, they have a whole bunch of stuff, so I'm eager to go along and have a look and just absorb the Wild West. Um, also looking at going to see Biosphere 2, and this is um, where they've got that huge glass dome thing area where they have all completely environmentally controlled um, with a rainforest and ocean, um, coastal fog desert, they, and you get a tour through the, under, what is it, the underground technosphere um, and learn about their air pressure and environment and how they have the lung and you get to see the lungs of the of the whole operation um so i was looking at that um the other one i want to go the other thing i want to go see while i'm there is the pima um 
Air and Space Museum. They've got an Air and Space Museum there, which is not far from where I'm going to be staying, like about three or four miles from where I'm going to be staying. Um, they do have a tour that they do to the Boneyard, which is um, where all the, um, it's one of the areas where they um, retired planes go to. So they have like acres of this, but the problem is, is that it's called, it's the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration um, group facility but it is on an Air Force base and in order to be part of the tour the minimum time for booking is 16 days in advance and I was like darn it I'm gonna be there in less than 16 days because they have to do security clearance and all of that sort of stuff to allow you on the base for this tour um, so I'm just gonna end up doing the oh, I'm getting a low battery can't talk for too long or I'll go offline because I've got no battery um, I'm gonna end up doing the 45 minute tram tour that they have at the museum which takes you around their grounds and um, they've got some um, Warbird Museum um, planes there, which I absolutely love and adore. Um, they've got military planes, they've got a whole bunch. So I'm keen to go and um, check that out as well. So those are some of the things I'm looking at doing when I'm in Tucson. Um, I've still got to figure out what I'm going to do for the night, for the days in between um, when I'm at that place that's between Phoenix and Tucson, which I can't even remember the name of the place. So I may end up renting a car there and doing some other places as well. Um, another place I'm thinking of doing is the Apache Trail. So I may do that from the place that's between Phoenix and Tucson. And had I known about the Apache Trail beforehand, which is another reason why before I go on my road trip, I should do some more research. Um, I could have actually done that while I was in Mesa because it's only like 15 minutes from where I was staying. But um, this place, it will put it probably about an hour. And so that's not so bad. I can, I can handle driving an hour somewhere in a rental car. So, um, so I'm looking at going to the, um, to the Apache Trail and uh, having a look around there. They've got a ghost town. <sighs> I mean, yeah, and that's by, um, at the base of um, Superstition Mountain, which apparently has all these mysteries about it and everything else. So, oh, I'm going to be in heaven. Wild West, mysteries. Oh, it's just oh, inspiration galore, um, satisfying my curiosity about the Wild West and history and Oh, I'm going to be in hog's heaven, I tell you. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up over the next few weeks. The ne um, tomorrow's going to be another writing day. Um, oh, somebody asked me about North and South, like they want to know who the actors were in that. Um, the two main actors, you got Patrick Swayze who plays Ori Main, who is the Southern Gentleman. And James Reed plays George Hazard, who is the Northern Gentleman. And it's like I said about this, but I actually looked and the playtime to watch all eight DVDs, there's two episodes per DVD. It's like 24 to 25 hours of viewing time. Each episode is anywhere from a minute, from an hour, a minute 30, an hour 30 to an hour 40 in length. So that's like when you add it all up, it's like around 24, 25 hours of viewing time and there ain't no way I'm binge watching that. I don't mind doing an episode a night or two episodes a night because you know do two episodes a night it's about the same length as a movie anyway or just a little bit so I'm about to go and I think I'm up to disc six so I've got two discs to go after this one and so I'll probably go and watch just one episode tonight um, and I'll see how we go with that. So loving the cold mornings. I get up in the morning it was 52 degrees inside the RV this morning. Awesome. Um, it means I sleep really, really good. I get into, I crawl into bed under my weighted blanket and um, read for a little bit and then I am out. Um, I think I got five solid hours last night and that's the most I have had in solid sleep um, for a long time. Because um, when it's hot, I don't sleep very well, but when it's the cooler temperatures, I will sleep like a log. So uh, enjoying these cooler temperatures here. Um, then I was looking ahead at the temperatures coming up to where I'm going to be going and it's going to be back up in the 80s and 90s during the day. In fact, one day, I think it's the day I leave the place that's between Phoenix to go down to Tucson is like 99 degrees in the place that I'm leaving. Um, I don't know what it is yet in Tucson. Or is that the day I arrive? I think that might be the day I arrive. It's 99 degrees. The day I arrive before the, before two, at the stop before Tucson. So we're going to be back up in the 90s during the day. Um, but the evenings are still going to be nice and cool. They're going to be in the 60s and the 50s, so I'm loving those nights. That's when you open up the windows at night, let the cold air come in and cool the RV down, um, and then you just snuggle down underneath the weighted blanket and sleep. 
<laughs> anyway, that's it from me. Um, I'm going to go and um, do some crocheting and watch an episode of North and South. And then tomorrow it'll be back into writing, back to learning more about character arcs and um, maybe do some planning for the town in between. Who knows? I've got a fried brain. Writer's cramp right now and I'm going to go and crochet. Hmm. I haven't learned to crochet left-handed, but I have learned to write left-handed. Problem is, ideas flow faster than I can write left-handed. We'll figure it out tomorrow. I think I might put some um, CBD oil on my wrist tonight. And um, that'll be good, for t good to go for tomorrow. Okay, have a super fantastic sparkling evening. And, oh, what is... How, how productive was your day today? What was your day like? Let me know. Have a super fantastic sparkling evening and we'll catch you tomorrow. Hey, Conera.